Are you ready? The Cornelia Stephanie Show. Wake up to love your call to action. Join Cornelia as she empowers others to live heaven on earth. Cornelia teaches listeners how to be the authority over yourself, embracing your inner guru. Feel yourself uplifted into limitless expansion, integrating ease and grace in a changing world. This show will cover topics such as unconditional love, your physical body, how to be in extraordinary relationships, create financial and emotional wealth, embracing entrepreneurship in the new earth. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Cornelia Stephanie Show. I'm Cornelia Stephanie, your host, and you're living heaven on earth together with us. I'm here today with my co-host, Tom Lombrazo. Welcome back to the show, Tom. Thank you so much. So excited to be here again today. It's going to be an awesome show. I, uh, I'm really inspired by today's show about what we have to share with people because we're going to be talking about perseverance, patience, and persistence to keep our frequency high, to stay committed to our dream, no matter what that, no matter what obstacles come in our way, to stay focused, to stay uh, committed, to persevere with our missions, with our dreams. And we're going to um, have an inspiring talk today to share with you some of the things that, um, that, that you can overcome when you experience interference and all kinds of other things in your life. But we're going to stay the course. And so uh, Tom uh, experienced many uh, interferences with his life. And uh, he has an incredible story for those of you that haven't listened to his backstory. You can go to his website, whenangelstouch.com. And you can look at um, the previous interviews that him and I did together when I first brought him onto the show about when Archangel Michael jumped into his car. And um, that's when uh, Tom's life changed. And so, Tom, why don't you just give us a little bit of a backstory to uh, that, what happened, and, um, and then we'll take it from there. Okay. Well, the short version is that uh, in February of 2001, I was driving home and uh, on an expressway, I was going 60 miles an hour and an angel came into my Jeep and talked to me and said simply this, slow to 35. Well, this felt important, so I did it immediately. Within seconds, a car pulled in front of me and caused a terrible accident and both cars were demolished. I had injuries, of course. I think everybody had injuries. But um, the highway patrolman that came later said, sir, if you were going 60, you'd be dead right now. I see it all the time. So my life changed at that point. It was an awakening. It was a jolt, uh, essentially, to me. Yeah. And would you say that it was a rebirth? Yes, I would. I would say it's a rebirth. Um, and um, I searched for years Finding out, trying to figure out who this angel was because it wasn't clear. Except in 2005, when my wife and I were sleeping at 1.30 in the morning, our bed dramatically raises up about a foot and down, up and down, up and down like that for 20 seconds. All the lights were going on and off, flashing, uh, including one not plugged in. After that, kind of decompressing from that um, incident, um, I had my first vision. It was of an angel, a beautiful angel in color, uh, an angel that had a sword in his hand and a shield on a horse. The next day, I was compelled to go to the bookstore, see if I could see this image somewhere in an angel book. Pull the first book out by random, turn to the middle somewhere, random, and there was an illustration of this angel exactly, Archangel Michael. Now I know who it was. And you can see behind me, over here, is a photograph I took of Michael in a cloud over Sedona, Arizona in 2008. So now we know Michael was the angel that saved my life. We know that he has come here to awaken me, and he's shown me so I can tell all of you, this is him. 
I, it's not just a story. I have proof right there and lots more proof too. So uh, that's the short version. It's beautiful. It's beautiful, Tom. And you know, the beautiful thing about um, uh, our consciousness expanding today, uh, the divine feminine really doesn't require proof. It's just wonderful when we can see um, the world through the eyes of an angel the way that you do, right? Because yeah. uh, the mind always wants to have the proof. The, the mind wants to have the proof to see, but clearly what is behind you and clearly your experience, the experience that you have and that you had is really enough to, um, to, for you to experience and for you to have that knowing, the knowing that it's Archangel Michael that came that night, that, that afternoon in the car and that came into your room. And Archangel Michael has been the one that's been guiding you on your spiritual journey in your rebirth now. And since that time, everything's changed and you see the world through the eyes of an angel and you've documented your entire spiritual journey. And I want to tell people about that incredible book that you and Caroline wrote together, The Magic of Finding Love and Peace. And everybody should purchase this book for $25. They can get it on your website. We have five lucky people today that get to email you at tom at whenangelstouch.com and they can receive a free copy of this book but it's got to be the first five and then if you're if, you, if it's not the one in the first five um you can still purchase the book and we encourage it because this book is filled with um tom's incredible journey and caroline's and um the the vibration of this book captures so much uh, higher consciousness and seeing the world through the eyes of an angel the way that Tom does. And that's one of his blessings and gifts to us. And uh, so be sure that you, you get that. And people can also check you out on Facebook at whenangelstouch.com and also go to your website at whenangelstouch.com. Right, Tom? Yes, and I might add, the book is kind of a bargain because... It's made of photographic paper, every page, which is expensive. And because I have, out of 200 and roughly 80 pages, there are 375 photographs that document the stories of my evolution over the last 16 years. And 150-some cloud images, which I resonate with clouds in an amazing way, as you can see behind. Those are examples. So if you're interested in clouds and the messages from clouds, um, this is a good book. So $25, you know, is, is a reasonable price, and I hope that uh, people will buy it. And because if you're not a believer uh, yet about angels and uh, the spiritual messages that we all get, this book will make you a believer. And it's a wonderful, it's just beautiful to look at. Like you said, um, $25 is a steal because I would think that if we put a real value on it, like like how much it really costs you to make this book, probably about $80, I would say, maybe more. I don't know, but it's, it's quite a bit. And then, and then the shipping and handling too, it's, it's quite a bit because of the photos and everything. And then the high vibration of everything that you talk about is so valuable. So it's, it's quite a steal for $25, right? But we want to talk about um, another free gift that people can have access to. And that is one of the cloud photos of the divine feminine. Would you, um, I think Carter's got a picture of that that he's showing live on Facebook, um, the Divine Feminine. And uh, Tom crafted a blessing. And would you share with us what that blessing is that's going to be inscribed on that beautiful gift that everybody gets? If you email Tom at whenangelstouch.com, he's going to send you this beautiful photo of the Divine Feminine with her blessing. Yes, uh, briefly. The photograph was on a completely cloudy day, and I just had a feeling looking overhead directly that I should take a picture of a cloudy sky. And I, I didn't see anything. But the next day, I looked at my computer, what I had done, and this image of this feminine creature, humanoid, there um, is incredible. And it had even kind of some rainbow going through it. So 
I just had a message to go take it, to show everybody. So what we have called it is the divine feminine, um, which is a lot of energies coming into earth these days. So here is the inscription that I would include on the photograph I would send to you. Behold the divine feminine within and around you. Honor the love that she brings to you. In reading this message, she blesses you infinitely with her love. Feel, receive, integrate this love deeply into your body. Live in peace within yourself and spread that peace throughout the world. So beautiful. So beautiful. Yes. And I was drinking it all in as you were reading it out and taking it all in. And thank you so much for gifting us this blessing of the divine feminine. And I might add, I yes. might add that when you mentioned the book, but also this photograph, everything that we touch carries energy. And if we influence that energy, which I have with the book and with this photograph, that energy that I carry is very positive uh, energy, the energy coming from angels. So when you see it, when you touch it, hopefully you experience that energy. It's a beautiful um, sacred symbol to put on your altar, to carry in your wallet, to carry in your purse, to know that we're not alone. We're going to talk a lot about that. But I want to talk about your dad. You and I were talking earlier before we got on the show that your dad was inspiring you to sing a song. And so why don't you tell us about that, Tom? Well, I'm not a singer, but I want to say that my dad is absolutely tremendous. He died with my mom in 2011 after 64 years of marriage. And I was with him when he died, the minute he died. And I got a message to take a picture over his body. He said that to me even though he's dead, apparently. And I took a picture. I didn't see it, but the next day I see his soul leaving his body. And that's in the book as well. Well, since that time, he's communicated with me all the time. A lot with songs because he was a musician in this life. And a lot of the songs that come forward are old songs. And I could be just talking like right now, and then I'd be interrupted singing a song that he wants me to sing. Yesterday... It was Hinky Dinky Parley Vu, which is a song that was originated during World War I by the troops in the trenches in Europe. Can you imagine? I asked him, why sing this song? And he said, please have people sing songs um, that remind them of their childhood, that they experienced in their childhood, because it helps to awaken you, like I've been awakened, Waken you to the angels, to the angelic forces, the energies that are so important to us these days. So it sounds kind of weird, doesn't it? But it's true. Well, just before the show, he asked me to sing a song for you. And I just know that I'm not a good singer. But here's what he said to me. How much is that doggy in the window? The one with the waggly tail. How much is that doggy in the window? I do hope that doggy's for sale. I must take a trip to California and leave my poor sweetheart alone. If he has a dog, he won't be lonesome, and that doggy will have a good home. And, of course, it goes on. But go reflect on your childhood and the songs that resonated with you in your childhood. Um... There was one, another one that came this week that my grandmother sang to me. We're going to pick that up when we get back. Okay. We're going to take a quick break. How much is that dog in the window? How much is that dog in the window? <laughs> anyway, we're going to take a, a quick break. We'll be right back on the Cornelia Stephanie Show. We'll be right back. everybody. Welcome back. You're listening to the Cornelia Stephanie Show. I'm with Tom Lombrazo, and we are talking about singing songs that inspire us from our childhood. Tom's dad recently spoke with him and told him to start singing the song, What's That Dog in the Window? How much is that dog in the window? And um, 
so Tom, you have another song that you feel inspired by, and which song is that? Your grandmother. Yes, but I don't know the words other than the first line. So my grandmother just sang this to me all the time, and I came in this week, and as I'm walking around, I started singing that first line, which is, I'm a little teapot, short and stout. I have to look up the lyrics to know more, but that that came in too. It's those songs in our childhood which um, bring us back because when we were young, we were much more psychic. All of us were more attuned to who we really were and are. And uh, that's what dad's message is to all of us. If you want to awaken yourself more than ever, do that, practice it. Even you know, in your own home, solitary, just, just sing it out. Wonderful. Yes. And by the way, my dad is pretty accurate because he's in this other plane of existence now, and now that he's passed. And he shares lots of wisdom. And part of that is in our new book, actually, several pages where I ask him questions about where he is, what he's doing, and so forth. And he responds. And see, what I love about that, Tom, is that, you know, your dad transitioned and he's in another plane of existence, but you have regular communications with your dad. And that's another message that you're bringing to our listeners, to our audience, to living heaven on earth, because you're you're communicating with your dad on a regular basis. So I that's, I appreciate that. And I thank you so much for that. So um, what's our life about, Tom? What is What do you think our life is about here on earth? Well... I'm going to give you a quote. It comes from Pablo Picasso, which I think sums it up. The meaning of life is to find your gift, and the purpose of your life is to give it away. And that is the essence of why we're here, and that is is to learn to love and to send the love everywhere you can, to make decisions that you maybe normally don't make, but make them every day to be kind, to share, to give, and you'll get it back. It's just the rule that we all live by is when you give, you'll get it back. Those that take, sure, they might make a lot of money and so forth, but I don't think they're very happy because they're just taking from people. They might just run over other people uh, to take whatever is theirs. We have examples of this all through our culture. You know, I'm sure all of us experience people that do that. Um, and um, I simply say, I know the way of living, and that is to give. And to give, and this is why I'm here on your show, is to give this information out, to give the book out to people so that they can understand that um, the, the real is- issue here that you learn it, you know, we all ask, what is the meaning of life? Well, the meaning of life is divine love, the love of everything created, everything. And once you understand that, then you understand your existence and what you're here for. And can you imagine if the entire world was a place of giving, not taking, but giving? We wouldn't have all these problems. Yeah. So that's, uh, that's what we're aspiring to. Um, one by one, each of us needs to think about that and bring more love into your life and share it. Well, I wanted to, uh, are you okay? So, uh, so I wanted to go into part of uh, transitioning or transforming on a spiritual way, which I've experienced. And I wanted to share those experiences with people. Um, it's not all, you know, a bunch of roses. It's, there's there are some it's just like as human beings we experience bad things in our lives and we experience good things well um uh, we uh as a spiritual being when you're going through the evolution of that and that took me 16 years to get to this point it doesn't happen overnight usually for people well uh early on i started attracting negative forces um beings that are all around us in our air we can't see them but they can see us and they attach to us like like a fly drawn to light and um and since uh people that are going through a spiritual existence probably exude more light they attract more of these bad guys you might say um and they can attach to you and they can make you do things 
and you have to be aware of that. Uh, my early uh, experiences go back to 2004 and five, where I was attacked pretty viciously by an entity and actually two entities that made me think differently and made me do things differently. And I didn't know what to do about it. And I was almost near suicide, frankly. And it took me a year and a half to get out of that. And that's the point of this discussion. It's about patience, persistence, and perseverance. It's easy when something bad has happened to you to give up. Many people commit suicide when perhaps they shouldn't because they haven't given enough time for it to play out. And um, I learned that lesson very early during this episode where I just determined no way on earth are they going to beat me. I don't care who it is. And um, I did find um, a wonderful resource out of Sedona, Arizona area. His name is Jaap Van Etten, J-A-A-P, V-A-N, E-T-T-E-N, and you can look him up. He's on the computer. He is wonderful. He has removed many entities that have attracted to me over the years, and he's been six, very successful. Wonderful guy. So, and there, if you look in our, our book that we're asking you to purchase, um, I list a number of resources there to help you. So, um, just acknowledge that um, Every day we might be attacked. We might have something attached to us. It may not make us feel as good as we should uh, feel. Well, um, another example was in 2012-13 area when I was doing our third book on called the called Simply Angelic, which is about clouds and the message I receive from clouds. And as we got done with our last uh, session with my editor, we're leaving the town he was in, which is Petaluma, California, and all of a sudden, my sunglasses fly off my face. I could feel like a hand brush my ear like this. And the glasses in midair broke in half like someone had their hands on them. And then the dashboard of my Jeep and my um, SUV, um, a light came on. And when I looked up what that light meant, it meant, it said, if you see this light, your wheels are spinning. This was the message from this nasty guy that attached to me. They didn't want this book to come out. They don't want this information out to people that might help them. And you see the book, and including this new book, uh, so many clouds. And the clouds, when you look at clouds, it's hard to be unhappy when you're looking up in the sky and you're seeing a beautiful cloud. And this helps transform us. So um, clouds are a good message for me to tell you about. Well, this entity that was on, that did this to me, um, it was a jinn, D-J-I-N-N, very powerful being. And if you look it up, these were created by God before humans. And when God made it, uh, created human beings, he asked the jinn to bow to his new creation. And they refused. They, they were really upset with God. And God said, apparently... If you don't bow by the time of the end times, you will pay a big price. Well, apparently the jinn broke into a couple of groups. But one group that's kind of okay with us and another group that's still very angry that we were created. So some of these bad guys still are around and they'll attach and they'll try to do something. Now they can see us, but we can't see them. So just know that these things are around you. But if you have the patience to deal with it, you find the resources to remove them from you, and they all can be removed. Um, and you have the persistence in your life to go forward with what's important with, to you, which I hope would hope would be that you would embrace love and send that out every day. You know, we all can do little random acts of kindness. Mm -hmm. um, you know, perhaps... You see a homeless person on the street, you might give them a dollar or whatever you can. That kind of thing. We all can do things to help each other. We're not all created equal in that regard. We're, some of us are born in wealth, some of us are not. Some of us have had some bad things happen to them. Some have had nothing bad happen. So, you know, 
we have the power within each of us to give. And I think Americans, by in general, are very um, giving people. But there are some people here that want to just take and take and take. So well, we want to talk more about this, Tom. We're going to take another another break right now. I want to talk more about attachments. I want to talk more about entities and implants um, and how, you know, we, we have certain attachments on the outside um, world too, things that we can see, things that we're attached to. And we know that there's that we're not alone on an invisible realm with our angels and our, our, our archangels and our guardian angels and our guides. We're not alone there. And and there's also a dark entities that um, are also in that realm. And it's happening here on, on Earth because we know there's good people and we know there's people that um, are working for the dark. And so we're going to talk a little bit more about this when we get back. Uh, you're listening to The Cornelia Stephanie Show. I'm talking with Tom Lombrazo. We'll be right back. I'm talking with Tom Lombrazo, seeing the world through the eyes of an angel. And we're talking right now about attachments, implants, dark forces, entities, which is all part of our world. It's all part of uh, our existence. And Tom is giving us tips and tricks and stories about what it is that we can do to uh, have them removed. And um, so continue on with the story, Tom. Yeah, um, interestingly, uh, about a week and a half ago, I was watching TV around 8.30 at night, and I had my hoodie on, um, and sitting in my chair, and it's a blue hoodie, and um, I looked down at it, and there's this white creature, you know, right about here, and um, it has legs and a body and a head, and I said, how did you get there? <laughs> well, when something like that happens, I'm, you know, my uh, radar goes up, and um, so I figured it's another bad guy trying to get at me, and uh, it was true, and so I had it removed uh, this week, and so point is, there it could show up even physically like that, um, so um, never to be afraid of these things. They exist. Fear is what they love. They love the energy of fear. You show fear, it's their food. The energy of fear is their food. Remember that. And, um, and so, don't be afraid. There are things to do to get rid of these things. Um, there are crystals to use. There's all kinds of things. And again, there are people that are sophisticated and talented to remove these. They're all around us. So, um, that kind of wind up this section, we talked about um, you discovering your gift and then giving it to others and sharing it. So, you know, now that you have found your gift, don't let negative entities interfere or giving or stop you from giving away your gifts to others. How do it's you know gifts? How do you know? Like, you know, like you you know that this is what you've been dealing with. Uh, you know, for a long time, because you have a powerful message. You have, you want to spread, you want to spread love and peace and magic in the world, and you want to um, share share this gift with everyone. So, but how is it that you know somebody would be able to know the difference, whether it's them or whether it is um, uh, you know something that's attached to them. How, how would they know the difference? Well, I think there are many things. Uh, certainly, you may not physically feel well, or some funny things are happening around you. You know, objects are moving, or uh, just funny things, um, things that occur that just aren't right, you know. And, um, and you might even feel it inside you. You might even feel a presence, which I have. Mm -hmm. um, and so uh, it doesn't hurt to contact someone to just assess that. Sometimes I don't know, and I'll just ask someone to clear me and, and find, uh, see if there's anything there. 
And um, yesterday I was cleared. I had three entities attached to my top of my head, my left shoulder, and my left ankle. And uh, we got them removed uh, instantly. Mm -hmm. I didn't feel them. Um, but when that little thing came on my hoodie, I had a sense that something was happening. So um, it's just being aware. Once you start knowing about these things, you'll become much more aware and you'll deal with it. Yeah, I just, I just want to be able to empower our listeners to make sure that, you know, people are not afraid. This is all part of what, uh, um, it's, it's part of that spiritual hygiene to make sure that, you know, uh, there's not any, anything dark attaching itself to you or, um, you know, because like you said earlier, the more light we shine, the more that we shine that light and the, the, the message and the, the mission that we have, um, we're going to repel, we're going to attract some, you know, situations to us uh, that are being asked to be cleared and removed, right? Yes. And I just want to point out that I'm an example. Someone had major, major attacks on them mm -hmm. over the years since 2004. They still persist, but I don't care anymore. I know I know what they are. Mm -hmm. I know I can deal with them. I know they want me to fear them. They want me to stop. They don't want me to be on this show. They've mm -hmm. tried to stop this show. They didn't want me to do my last book. So I know what they're up to. Mm -hmm. um, and But I don't think they can kill me. Okay? I don't think that. And they can try, but they're not going to win. So... I think you have to have the strength within yourself to say, okay, they're here, you know. You know, it's like human beings. We know within our friends and family and others, co-workers, there are some people we don't like or they don't like us. Well, they're carrying negative energy. You don't want that. So, um, you know, some people want us to fear things. We shouldn't fear it. By and large, we shouldn't fear so don't live in fear. Don't live in fear of these things. Just take care of them. They can be removed. And so do you have some, uh, you said you have some resources. Uh, what were the name of the resources again, Tom? Yes, uh, Jaap Van Etten, J-A-A-P-V-A-N-E-T-T-E-N. -E -T -T -E mm -hmm. He's out of a place near Sedona, Arizona. Just look him up on the internet and you'll see him. Uh, fantastic guy. You can call him and uh, make an appointment and he can do this remotely you don't have to see him mm -hmm. there are others there are a num number of, i'm sure in any place you live there are a number of healers or psychics that can also do this for you and let's tell the listeners again where they can get your book the magic of finding love and peace and then um they can get your book at whenangelstouch.com and um also receive the first five people that request the book will get it for free at uh, tom at whenangelstouch.com so they'll be able to receive the book for free if they're the first five one of the first five emails yes. Yes. yeah yeah and go to okay. tom's website at whenangelstouch.com and like his face his page because tom always posts cloud photos and um he has a quite an extensive um library of photos on his facebook page that are really really fun and inspiring and so basically what you're saying tom is that no matter what don't give up no matter what happens is to keep your vibration high right yes don't let others control you. Mm -hmm. That's that's a big thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. So, can we talk about frequency and vibration? Let's do it. Okay. Each of us uh, carries a vibration or a frequency. Uh, like a radio, you can turn the dial. It, it changes the, vibe, the frequency so that you pick up a particular station. Similarly, we have a frequency. Everything on earth has a frequency. The stones, the sky, everything. Well, um, the higher the vibration, the higher the frequency, the closer we are to God. The closest we are, closer we are to the angels. 
the angels are very high frequency and vibration. So, do you want to be low vibration and be in the lower realms of existence with what I call the bad guys? If that's If that's your decision, you certainly can do it. But I think the best path is to be of a angelic vibration. Why not be with the angels? Why not talk to the angels? I don't think I'd be able to talk to who I talk to unless I was, my mind was wanting to connect with higher vibrations. We attract who we ask for. In other words, if we, if we, I'll give the um, example that I think all of us can relate to. As human beings, we have people around us. I remember during school that there are some cliques of people that weren't so good and cliques of people that thought they were better. And, you know, you can you can hook up with people in your life that um, that only want to take advantage of you and run you into the ground. And then there are people that are giving. They just want to be friends. Same way with co-workers, I'm sure. Everybody's experienced the co-workers that, that uh, will step over anybody to get on top, for example, including you. Um, or, or whisper things about you. You know, you know the scene. It's just um, those are people that exist. Well, similarly, um, in the spiritual world, there are bad guys and there are some wonderful entities, angels and so forth. And, um, you know, just like my dad right, is now in a place that uh, is not here, but he's, he's in a place uh, somewhere between the third and fourth dimension and he's able to talk to me. Well, He's with the higher vibrations now. So the question is, um, how do you maintain and get a higher and higher vibration? And I want to give you some examples. Mm -hmm. Love is the key. Mm -hmm. um, keep love in your life each and every day. Think about love. Do things that are of, of love. Give to somebody. Help somebody. Um, talk to yourself about love. Um, you know, we can easily say, well, I love you, but do you really love the person? You know, it's really about the sincerity of love that's coming from you. You know, spend some time practicing this. This is uh, something we're not really taught. Now, I want to tell you an example. Um, my parents were of the Depression era, mm -hmm. and my dad was one of ten kids, and my mom was of a German ex uh, um, ancestry. And on um, both sides, they weren't really taught to hug people or hug within the family. It didn't exist. They didn't have time. They were struggling to survive. Uh, if you're one of ten kids, how do you get enough hugs, right? Yeah. Well. After I was, I lived 60 years with my parents, and I and they loved me dearly. I know that, but they could never express it, you know, physically. Mm -hmm. So one day I said, you know what? I'm gonna hug them. This was as foreign as you can think about. I hugged my parents when I went and saw them one day, and they said, "What are you doing?" I said, "I'm hugging you." Wow. And um, there was a shock to them. Yeah. And I hugged both of them. Well, the next time I saw them, they hugged me. Oh, okay. And they continued to hug me every time we saw each other. Such a simple thing, such a simple thing changed yeah. everything. Yeah. It changed the way we related to each other. It changed our thought process in a way. It's such, you know, if we're not taught these things, you have to think about what you can do to express your love. And the more you express it, the more you're going to get. So um, that's a, it's a really simple example that happened to me in my life. You know, um, anyway, that's one. Use your heart when you make decisions. Now, we're taught to use our brain. Well, the brain is not the only organ you have. Your heart is really your best organ. And um, love comes from your heart. Mm -hmm. And... Um, Think about what you do at work that you could do. Make decisions with your heart. Mm -hmm. um, if we had leaders that made decisions with their heart, perhaps they would make better decisions. 
no question in my mind that about that. And we we can go into many. We can do a whole show on that. <laughs> um, keep negativity out of your out of you. Don't think about negative things. Don't have negative thoughts. Um, if you find yourself being upset with somebody, perhaps think about that a second time. Maybe you shouldn't be. Maybe you should let things go. And I'll tell you what, um, for like the last six years, my wife and I, my wife Caroline and I, we do not do anything negative. We don't watch terrible things on TV, negative things. Um, we don't um, we don't associate with people that are negative. And that included some friends that we had that really, really weren't so much friends. Um, getting everything out of your life that's negative. Um, in fact, we've experienced places that we would go, like restaurants and so forth, that felt negative. We would walk right out. Um, and so... And that's that's really powerful when you do that, when you walk yes. into a restaurant or any environment, really, that's negative. You can, as empaths, we can feel the energy and we can feel the vibration and we walk in and and um, and you, you're just like, I don't want to stay here. Right. And so I think each of us kind of know what's good for us and what's bad for us. Yeah. Sometimes we're lured into um, these situations because we've always done it. Right. Or, we, you know. Um, and so well, we should on ourselves. We should on ourselves, and we think we should stay. Yes. Right. right? When yeah. when really intuitively we listen to that first call, we know. You know it, it takes a little bit of courage to do this because it's you're changing your life. Mm -hmm. You know, you're really changing your life the way you. We kind of we know we're kind of born into this life. We don't have a choice of our parents and our friends so much and. And when we go to school, we're with all these other people. And when we go to work, we're, we have to um, be among people we didn't select. So you have to make judgments each and every day about what you're going to do. And uh, you may have to make decisions like this that change your thought process about who you want to be with, where you want to go, what you're thinking, and so forth. It all is contributes to a higher vibration yeah so tom we we're we've got five minutes left in this show i decided to skip the last break so that we can uh cover uh what it is that you were talking about raising our frequency raising our vibration what it is that we can do to um to release negativity and even um, some of the entities and attachments that come along that are part of this uh, earthly existence and uh, what we can do to keep our vibrations high. And so I just want you to think about now what we can do to wrap up these next four minutes of um, uh, leaving our audience with the message of what it is that you wanted to bring forth today. Well, we've kind of talked a little bit about it all through the show, but really it's about the heart. And I always say, my heart to your heart. My heart to your heart. It's a form of communication. Um, and because our hearts are where our emotions are in a way and where our strength is. Mm -hmm. So uh, when you hug somebody, hug them with your heart. Hug when you're talking to somebody, talk to them with your heart. And I, I have a little thing I always say is open your heart and you will see. People ask me why, I, you know, I see things, right? And well, I didn't used to see them, but I changed my way of life. Don't be afraid of change. Mm -hmm. um, you know, sit down with yourself and think about who you are, what you're doing. Assess your situation in life. Should you change it? Maybe you should. Maybe you should change it with your heart. I don't think you can make a mistake, any mistake with your heart. It's all about sending that love everywhere. Can you imagine just sending your love energies? And it's energy. When you're speaking, it's energy. When you're doing something with your heart, it's energy. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's my message. And it's about, with your heart, it's about divine love. You're sending that love out to all of the earth. And as my uh, dad has said, what's really needed on earth is this love and to visualize the earth in your mind 
and the hands of God holding the earth, protecting it, bringing the love to the earth. We all need to think about our home here and what we can do to help other people and the earth itself. Yes, and that's really what we're all doing is we're waking up to our true nature and our true nature is that we are love and to spread that love and that magic and that peace around the earth and that that is part of the blessing that you wrote with the divine feminine blessing would you would you read that again to our yes. listeners divine feminine blessing and then please tell them where to get where to get a free copy of that amazing cloud photo that you took yeah by the way uh, if you go to my website www.oneangelstouch.com on the home page is the cover of our new book but also below that is this picture, this cloud image of the Divine Feminine. So here is the inscription. Behold the Divine Feminine within you and around you. Honor the love that she brings to you. In reading this message, she blesses you infinitely with her love. Feel, receive, integrate this love deeply with inside your body. Live in peace within yourself and spread that peace throughout the world. Yes, that's so beautiful. And you're going to send everyone a image of that if they put in the subject line divine feminine frequency or divine feminine yes. photo just email me at tom at one touch.com and say that and i will and of course you um and i'll just respond an email that way yes and people can get your book for 25 dollars, and then you also have some artwork uh tom that we've introduced before we've had some images uh, that we introduced before about your artwork, which is also extremely, extremely high vibrational uh, Godhood frequency because the angels were coming through you and you captured that in, in, in art and paintings and um, that's available. Where can they find that at your website? Again, on my website, www.oneangelstouch.com. Um, it's referred to on the homepage and you can go hit that link. Yes. Yes. It's a, it was a wonderful um, conversation today talking with you that uh, no matter what it is that we're experiencing, even, you know, I too have overcome a lot of uh, challenges in my life. Uh, being a suicidal soul, I was a suicidal soul and have overcome that and have been reborn again in this life. And that's what living heaven on earth is about. It's about uh, letting the old self die away and rebirthing ourselves. And we're constantly and continuously rebirthing ourselves by always choosing love, by, like Tom said, feeling with our heart, thinking with our heart, making choices from our heart, and for bringing the love to um, our brothers and our sisters. And it always starts with first bringing the love to yourself, hugging yourself, loving yourself, nurturing yourself, honoring yourself. And so I actually created a course that is upcoming. And um, this course begins on May 5th. You can go to my website at Cornelia Stephanie Dot com and you can look under the evolve tab and there you will see that um, this course that I'm offering is how to um, step into your wholeness to really be able to embody your whole self because like Tom was saying everything is about vibration everything is about frequency and it has to do with your physical body and your physical body is a stargate it is the Stargate that holds all of the codes and everything that you need in order to thrive in your life, in order to build and create the new world and to live and practice in wholeness because it doesn't just happen overnight. It doesn't happen overnight. We have to release and let go of the war, the dark energy that is within us that has been suppressed for a long, long time and release that energy and then come back into our wholeness and come back into the truth of who we are. And the truth of who we are is love, absolute love. And that is what we're here to do. And so Tom, as always, it's a pleasure. I love um, the angelic photos that you have hanging behind you. And um, is that something that's for sale as well? Yes. Um all my photographs that I've taken of clouds, which are thousands and thousands of them, and they're seen in the books, you could just 
email me at tom at oneangelstouch.com. Tell me which photograph you'd like, and I can make it whatever size you want. And, uh, of course, you know, I'll tell you what it costs to make. Sure. And, um, and these are these are about three by four feet in size. So um, they're just beautiful. They are. And thank you so much for capturing it. Thank you for the show today. Thank you, everybody, everyone, for listening and for tuning in. We'll see you next time. Namaste.